Chris Zangplai and welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. First, the top stories. The Education Ministry will not relocate the students of Institute. Flu clinics see a drop in the number of visitors. And uh, the State Mining Corporation Limited's decision to call for an open competitive bidding lives people of four gilks in some Jonkar unhappy. Now the details, the students of classes 7 and above in Fensling Tromde as well as those at the Chumetang Middle Secondary School in Pasaka will not be relocated this academic session. As per the initial plan, the Education Ministry was to relocate some 2,400 students and teachers from Fensling to other districts this year due to the COVID-19 situation. According to the notification from the Education Ministry, the students are retained in their respective schools because the COVID-19 cases in the country have been controlled significantly. Now, fewer cases are reported. The other reasons include the arrival of vaccine into the country and increased awareness in the communities, parents and students regarding the pandemic. Earlier, the Education Ministry's decision to transfer the students of Fonsoling Tomde and Chumita Middle Secondary School had left both parents and students worried. Meanwhile, the students who were relocated from Fonsoling Tomde to Punakha, Samsi and Wangdefoda will return to their former schools after the examinations, which will be over by March. Some 1,600 teachers and students of classes 9 and above from the Tomde were relocated in September last year to continue with their studies. As per the Ministry, the National Task Force recommended the arrangement since Finsaling is considered as a high-risk area for COVID-19. Sunam Pim for BBS News. And parents and students alike in Finsaling are relieved after the Education Ministry cancelled the relocation of the Tromdes students. Considering the high risk of COVID-19 transmission in the town, the Ministry planned to transfer the teachers and students of uh, Classes 7 and above to safer districts. Five schools, including one in Pasaka, were identified for the relocation beginning this academic session. With schools reopening next month, both parents and students in the town were reluctantly preparing for a new learning environment. Many finished the required shopping and some families decided to move to Thimpo. A few parents even thought of letting their children skip school this academic session. ตาเจตาจุงกีอลุยาดามากะเนตอมองกะวานาจานิดีนามิสมกะดิเชละเตตรอซอเบรุนามิสมยูตานิเลนนาควอเรนเทนนาเบรุเดมองกะวาจุง
The flu clinics across the country are now seeing fewer visitors. In Thimpu, it reduced by about 40% after the mass screening. According to the health minister, mass screening could be one of the main reasons for the drop. The flu clinics recorded an increasing number of people during the lockdown. A clinic received about 400 people daily during the lockdown period. Today, they received less than 100 people in a day. With the lockdown, we implemented lots of interventions uh, like testing of the outbound, uh, outbound travelers. And we also implemented the mass screening in Paro, Thimpu, and uh, testing of the travelers were compulsory. But people should not be complacent. We still emphasize and insist our public on getting tested, especially those who are having signs and symptoms of flu. Because we cannot say anything, uh, there are viral, uh, viral strains which are showing exceptional uh, behavior. So therefore, uh, we request the general public to get tested by any means if they have signs and symptoms of flu. Since the second lockdown, more than 40,000 people visited the flu clinics across the country. Tempu saw more than 10,000 people. Kilijim for BBS News. The Gilifu residents finally get to buy green chilies from the local market. The spice was missing from their menu for almost a month now. But there is a problem. It has become a costly item. The green chilies hit the market in Gilifu this weekend. But the supply is limited. People are paying as high as 800 newton a kilogram. They don't seem to mind. They have been eating dry chilies all this while. The unseasonal rain damaged most of the winter vegetables this time, including chili. But not everybody is happy. The price is very high, 800 newton per kilo. It would be difficult for some. I think the officials should intervene. One of the vendors said they have no option. The Chuzaga and Dikling Gyoks supplied the green chilies, and a farmer said he sold it for 400 newton a kilo. Official said limited supply is causing the price rise. But more gyoks will soon harvest green chilies, which might bring down the price. For Karma Wangdin Sarpong, this is Tanin Finso for BBS News. Bitter nut prices hit a new high during the nationwide lockdown in most parts of the country. For instance, in Bumta, 80 pieces of the peeled bitter nuts were sold at around 800 nitam, which is equivalent to the price of 25 kilogram imported rice. However, with the relaxation of lockdown restrictions, prices are gradually falling down. Yet, people still have to pay a hefty amount for the stimulant. In Bumta, 80 pieces of nuts cost almost 600 newton. A pack of 7 pieces of nuts costs 50 newton. Before the recent lockdown, a pack contained 10 pieces. Vendors say transportation charges for goods have increased after the transshipment system was put in place at Pinsaling last year. The price increased all across the country, not just in Bumtang. During the lockdown, there was no supply at all. I managed to bring in a few sacks, which cost me around 12,000 newton for transportation. 
Moreover, we also have to pay 50 newton for 80 pieces of betel nut as tax. 55, 60 rupees per day, sir. However, the supply has resumed after movement restrictions were relaxed. The market is becoming competitive again. I am selling at a cheaper rate because these are perishable goods and I need to sell them off as fast as I can. I will stop importing the nuts if the competition becomes tough. The supply has resumed now. More vehicles are coming in and the transportation charges are dropping. Goods have generally become expensive in the last one year or so across the country. Mechanizing the transshipment of goods in penciling might reduce the burden on consumers, but for now, people keep buying goods at an inflated rate. For Kipchu in Bumta, String Dento for BBS News. Along with many farmers across the country, the people of Kiri in Samdujongkar started growing vegetables on a commercial scale. The controlled import of vegetables due to the COVID-19 pandemic encouraged them as well. However, there is one problem. The water supply in the village is insufficient for farming. Today, with no irrigation facility in Kerry, its farmers use the drinking water supply to water their vegetable gardens. But the supply is barely enough to cater to all the 15 households in the village. The water supply is not enough for our gardens. Without water, the vegetables dry. We have to use the existing water supply for all purposes. Recently, we received a light rainfall and it helped, especially in watering my garlic plants, which were wilting. We have to use the drinking water supply for various purposes, so it is not enough. Moreover, everyone here has a vegetable farm each. According to the Dewatang Gup, there is no plan to provide a separate irrigation water supply for Kiri. The villagers should manage the existing supply well. And on the Georg's part, it will continue maintaining the water sources annually. We have 5 million items this year as well to maintain all the water sources in the Georg. The required materials have arrived and we are ready to begin the work. Once that is complete, I think the villagers will have enough water for drinking as well as farming. Meanwhile, the district agriculture sector assures the villagers free water pipes and tanks by next winter if they continue producing vegetables on a commercial scale. For Kinlawanchu in Samdup Jonkar, String Dento for BBS News. People of four Gawags in Samdup Jonkar are unhappy with the State Mining Corporation Limited's decision to call for an open competitive bidding for the hiring of earth moving equipment. As per the initial understanding, the work was to be outsourced to the community. The corporation is renting heavy machinery such as excavators, payloaders and trucks for a coal mining site in Marsala. In November 2019, the villagers of Marsala, Pinsaling, Pematang and Samrang Geoks asked the State Mining Corporation Limited SMCL to outsource the hiring of earth moving equipment to them. They put up the proposal through the Samdrup Chilling Dunkhag administration. The SMCL said the communities will be allowed to participate in the project. Accordingly, a private company, Pemi Dejung Kinfen Private Limited, was formed. Its shares were floated among the people of the four Geoks. <laughs>
According to the SMCL, the villagers initially agreed to raise a capital of 189 million newton. Their private company was also notified to assure of being able to do so by the end of last year. But so far, only 30 million newton has been collected from around 3,900 shareholders. And without enough funds, the SMCL said that the private company will not be able to procure the required machinery. <laughs> He added due to the second lockdown, the villagers were not able to sell their cash crops, and so they could not buy more shares. Moreover, the remaining amount can be met through bank loans or credit facilities the companies supplying heavy machinery provide. Meanwhile, the local leaders of the four Georgs also wrote to the SMCL to withhold the bidding which is scheduled for tomorrow. For Kinlewachu in Sangdup Jonkar, Sring Dandu for BBS News. The Kurutang Bajo Highway project is facing a shortage of skilled workers. The pandemic has also made it difficult to bring in construction materials. The work on the nearly nine kilometer long highway connecting Wandi to Punakha began in April last year. The road is expected to be ready by July this year, but with two lockdowns, it might get delayed. The road is not complete, but people are already using it. Today, the widening work is almost complete. This is Kurutang Bajo Highway. Walls are being constructed along the road, and now it is time to install hume pipes for water drainage and culverts. But the project could not procure due to the nationwide lockdown. They need more than 150 pipes. <laughs> Permanent structure First lockdown, time Mainly because Another problem is the shortage of skilled workers. Many foreign workers left due to the pandemic. There were 50 workers, but half quit the job. Wall chamni ki thele permanent structure chamni ki thele the time nam sabi mugola. Tarile gusume within 20 days machi ki wall chamni ki lading machi judun la. Ta mainly machi ki level ki kangyal the theni digi. Tebe mama chhi machi ki ani wall ki lading sabi khasa khani lera judun don la. Hume pipe thera machi ki malle shutter rabe hisu achi machi ki. This 130 million newton road will reduce the travel distance between Punakha and Wangdi by almost 14 kilometers. It will also help decongest the traffic between the two districts. For Changa Dojin Wangdi Fodra, Sring Dantu for BBS News. In the agriculture sector, the COVID-19 pandemic is keeping our farmers and officials alike busy. In Serang, it has left three extension officers busier. Call them workaholics, passionate or firm believers of leading by example, but they are getting their hands equally dirty. Our reporter, Pema Tsong, finds out more. It is the weekend, but D.B. Gale, the agriculture extension officer of Sergitang, is in the field working. This is one time in a week when he is free to tend to the vegetable farm he started with two other fellow extension officers of Kilkorthang and Sirangte. With approval from the district and the Geok administrations, they converted a fallow land in Sergitang to a commercial model farm in September last year. 
They are growing chili, onion and tomato on three and a half acres of land. This has started to compensate the shortage of vegetables in the country, one. And then the other is to revive the land, which has been uh, laid as a uh, fellow for decades. And then number three, our main objective is to disseminate the agriculture technology to the farmers. And, uh, and final is to come out with the proper cost of production. He says their experience could contribute to fixing a reasonable selling price for vegetables. Today, people across the country complain of exorbitant rates for local vegetables, especially green chilies. Of course, we have invested our uh, uh, money for procuring so many uh, materials and then uh, investing to the laborers and then investing our time in weekends. We will be uh, selling these uh, producers in the market uh, at a reasonable price. I think this chili will remain uh, for uh, one year, one day or other. I think we can contribute to the nation. The vegetables from the farm will hit the market next month. People might be thinking that as a civil servant, I, we might have been using their share, but then it is not. La. We have a proper uh, documentation for this, la. and then we don't want to uh, get the share from the people. This is rather helping them in terms of disseminating the technology. Okay, some people they are visiting to my field, and then they are just copying what is doing. And then even myself, I'm just forcing them to start such activity in their farm. The farm also recruited a few regular workers from the community. So far, the team of extension officers spent over 600,000 gitim on the farm. For Pema Chaung in Sirang, Sonomongdi, PBS News. Well, this brings us to the end of this edition of Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. Until next time, I'm Cheku, signing off. All of now.